As one of the longest-running video game franchises, Pac-Man has certainly had a storied history. If you know anything about video games, you probably know about Pac-Man, and chances are you're familiar with the game that started it all and became a huge arcade hit in the 80s. On the off chance you're not, what you're seeing here is as simple as it looks. Eat all the dots in a maze to clear it while avoiding the ghosts, eat one of the four power pellets in the corners to get the chance to turn the tables on the ghosts, and try to grab the fruit in the middle whenever it appears. It's instantly intuitive, and as such, it's little wonder it became one of the most iconic games of all time. Of course, with that level of success comes countless imitators and inspirations, old and new, and sequels of all sorts to try and recapture the success of the original. Pac-Man's sequels have taken him through almost every genre you can imagine. 2D platformers, 3D platformers, a party game, racing games, puzzle games, you name it, chances are Pac-Man's been in one before. Beyond Miss Pac-Man, though, nothing has seen quite the same level of success as the original. It's certainly not for lack of trying. A lot of Pac-Man's games are actually great in their own right. But Pac-Man is certainly at its most appealing, if not its best, when the goal of the game is instantly clear. And in 2007, we got the last game made by series creator Toru Iwatani, Pac-Man Championship Edition. A game that, along with its enhanced remake, elevates the classic Pac-Man formula to a new level. The goal of Championship Edition DX is fundamentally the same as the original game. Eat all the dots in the maze and get the highest score possible. What sets it apart from the original game is the wide range of modernizations added that turn it from a game based on long-term survival into one about beating the clock to score the most points you can. Everything that was fun to do in the original game is emphasized here in different ways. Holding down a different direction to make a quick turn like players tend to do subconsciously in the original is rewarded with higher speed, dot eating is still the primary way to progress and is as satisfying as ever, and eating fruit changes the layout on the other side of the stage, constantly keeping things varied, but many players' favorite part of the original, munching ghosts, has been totally reimagined. Once a ghost spots you, it will relentlessly chase you and form a chain of ghosts to trail you throughout the maze, adding any nearby sleeping ghosts you wake up to the chain as you pass them by. Eating a power pellet still grants you the ability to fight back, and turning around to devour the whole chain of ghosts following you is immensely satisfying and feels incredibly rewarding. Interacting with ghosts also highlights this game's emphasis on speed and beating the clock rather than pure survival. Hitting a ghost not only costs you a life, but it slows down the speed of the game, leading to overall lower score potential. Hitting a ghost is actually a somewhat rare punishment though, as the game gives you a few tools to avoid doing so. There's a pronounced slowdown when you're close to colliding with a ghost, and if you find yourself cornered, usually by your own chain or one of the classic four ghosts cornering you, you can use a bomb to send them all away for a slight speed penalty. The slowdown effect is a brilliant design decision that helps both casual and hardcore players alike. Casual players can use it to avoid losing a life, while the existence of the effect incentivizes hardcore players to carefully plan their routes and watch the movements of the classic ghosts carefully. Between all of this, fantastic level design that forces players to make split-second decisions on what route to take through a level to maximize their score while continuing to make progress, dozens of mazes available to play, and dedicated time trial and ghost combo modes for each, it's no surprise this game has received wide critical acclaim. And it's without question one of, if not the best classic Pac-Man experience out there. Bondi and Namco certainly had their work cut out for them when it came time to make a sequel, and in 2016, Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 was released. It did its best to create a fresh experience distinct from the first Championship Edition, but I feel as though the changes made made it a weaker game overall. The biggest changes involved ghost behavior, wildly changed from previous entries. For one, ghosts no longer kill you instantly upon impact, instead getting angry after a few hits, upon which they can kill you. Sleeping mini-ghosts also no longer trail behind you, instead joining a train with one of the classic four. In theory, this should create more tense decision-making than before, but in reality, one angry ghost is much easier to avoid than a trail of them behind you. 
The game in general rarely forces you to think on your feet like the original or Championship Edition DX do. If you follow the pack dots, you'll automatically add every mini ghost in the course to the train for the inevitable power pellet chomping. This has also changed a bit. The lead ghost of a train will flee on a rail, and you have to chase them down in order to eat the whole train. It's certainly flashier, but the whole process requires relatively little from the player in comparison to managing your chain size in the first game. Combine this with the fact that if you abstain from chomping down ghost trains, the mini ghosts disappear, and ghost trains in this game feel more like an inevitability than something you have to work towards. Flashy presentation over functional design permeates the whole game. It can be easy to lose Pac-Man in the sea of color, especially on certain visual styles, and scores feel less meaningful here than they did in CE. In CEDX, breaking a million points is fairly challenging. In 2, it's easy to break 3 million simply by following pack dots. This is definitely beneficial for casual players, since the higher number leads to a higher dopamine hit, but the large number obscures how well you actually did. All of this being said, however, I wouldn't say Championship Edition 2 is a bad game. Far from it. On expert difficulty, because of how quick Ghost's anger and fruit and power pellets running away from the player, it can force the player to think on their feet in much the same way as the original. And the new adventure mode is an excellent evolution of the concept of time trials from the first game. Top all of this with a killer soundtrack that easily outshines the original and you still have a great game. It's just one that finds itself in the shadow of its predecessor. Happy 40th, Pac-Man! Here's to many more great games in the future. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate it if you could leave a like and or comment down below. And if you want to see more of these analysis videos in the future, please consider subscribing. Until next time, I'm Forma, and those are my thoughts.